Man, uh, great call last night by Krook. He sat there and looked at Chuck. He goes, he's trying to tie this game up right now. Three seconds later, boom, gone. Into the water, McCovey Cove Dave with his net. Ball game tied. And he's trying to tie it up. Yeah. High drive. There it is. Right field. It is out of here. There you go. And you, I, like, no one in the building. I'm like, they're winning. They're winning. They're winning this game. And they did. Well, the crowd surely seemed, and I was just getting it through the TV, but it felt like everyone in the crowd was anticipating a comeback. After the double play, totally. Crawford gets the base hit to make it 3-2. At that point, you're thinking, oh, they're winning this game. Ah. And it's just a matter of how. Is it a walk-off? Is it extra innings? It felt like it was going to be a walk-off. Crawford deserves a huge mention in this thing because uh, that was the moment you thought. And I think it was the sixth. Was it the bottom of the sixth or the bottom of the seventh? I was the seventh. Okay, Giants are down 3-1. They load the bases with no one out. Uh, I was out at the uh, what I call the Pete's Wind Tunnel uh, because, yes, I drink coffee at night. Caffeine does not bother my sleep. Christy and I went to get an evening coffee, and that is the coldest spot in the entire state of California is the line at Pete's in center field. Is that behind the left field foul pole, it's basically? Right, no, no, no. More towards center. It's right next to Orlando Cepeda's gotcha, deal. Okay. okay. The cha-cha bowl. It's, yeah, right. If you walk past the glove and the slide and all that okay, stuff, yeah, yeah. get a little Pete's. Well, you but- get that wind blowing straight in <laughs> off the East Bay. It's a bit of a wind tunnel it's, it's out there. It's intense. Yeah. It's intense. So we're out there just, uh, and you know, I don't drink hot coffee, so I'm the weirdo who sits there. Come on. I did. I did. I walked up, and I'm frozen. There's an icicle on my nose, and I'll have all the nice vanilla latte, please. And they're like, they didn't even blink. There you go. There's 15 your bucks. 24 ounce, $800. We move on with our day. <laughs> and, and here comes the double play ball. The double play ball. And you're like, oh, the whole building. The shoulders go down. And then B. Craw got everybody right back into it with the two-out hit. That was a huge moment, and you're right. It was at that moment where I'm like, they're winning this game. They're winning. They're going to find a way. Yeah, They've got that vibe. That's who they are right now. Big. It just was great to see, and especially for Brandon Crawford, a, a guy who's been maligned and rightfully maligned, and you got a rookie come up and take your place, and so you're basically not a starter anymore, although he was last night. You're one of the great giants of this tenure, one of the great giants of all time, quite frankly, in a very storied franchise. You will be forever remembered. I don't think he gets his number retired, but there will be a certain yep. level of honorarium for Brandon Crawford, a two-time champ and just an all-around great guy, local kid, makes good, and yet he's come up with big-time hits over this nine-game stretch. Oh, over and over again. Yeah. Great series at Dodger Stadium for sure. Let's go to Jerry in Union City. Uh, we're taking your Giants phone calls here, Willard and Dibbs. Make it nine in a row for the comeback kids. Uh, hey, Jerry, you're on Willard and Dibbs. What are you doing? Jerry? Where'd it go? Jerry did not. Now, Lucas, did he not like my comment about how the Giants are not dominating? Was that what he, he didn't like that comment? Yeah, he, I don't have it in front of me. He okay. said something about a run differential over the last nine games. It's well, like 70 yeah, something. At yeah, yeah. When, when you win a game yeah. 15 to nothing, it's going to send your run so differential through the roof. You're wrong. Yeah, I'm wrong yeah. or he's wrong. No, you. No, According they, dom- to him. they dominated in that game. In the other games, huh? I mean, listen, to me, if you're dominating, you're not down three to nothing most of the time in the fifth inning. They even go back to Dodger Stadium. And, like, things got a little sideways there. Uh, I, we're, we're driving to Tahoe Friday night, and the Giants are getting no hit. They're getting no hit. Now, I didn't give up because I don't do that, but I will admit something about last Friday night. Because you know how it is. If you're a parent, you know how it is when you're on long drives. And the kid is into it, but now the Giants are down 4 nothing, and they're getting no hit. And, and, and he looks at me and he goes, Dad, could I, um, could I play on your phone for a little bit? which means I got to turn because we were watching through the Bluetooth on the NBC app. He's holding it. Don't worry. I'm, I was being safe. But the point is we're watching the game, and then he's like, I want to play Madden Mobile. I'm like, all right, here you go. For you, 20 minutes, get a couple games in there. And so he does. And then you get that really fun thing where you swipe back out of Madden, Madden Mobile, turn the game back on, the Giants are up 5-4. to four. And He's like, oh, my gosh, they're up. And you watch the way the rest of that thing ends, and it goes sideways, and Junis into sure. right field, and all that stupid stuff that happened. 
and then they dominate the rest of the weekend, and then there's these two games, which the Padres have choked. Let's be honest with you. So I, yeah, they're playing great, and they're a very good team. Would you call them dominant? Would you call them dominant over the last week? With the way they're playing within games? It's always weird in baseball because they've won nine in a row and they've won nine in a row in, in different fashions. Yeah. So by the very fact that you've won nine in a row and the giant San Francisco franchise record is 14. So they're knocking on that oh. door. Now they had 15 over the course of two seasons from 02 to 03. I don't count those in terms of wraparound streaks, but 14 straight is the San Francisco record from 1965. So... Nine in a row is dominant. You've okay. won nine in a row. Yes. That's a dominant stretch. But you look at the way it's gone. You mentioned it earlier last segment. The starting pitching has been a little bit lopsided. It's been a little bit wonky. You've fallen behind. You've needed late game heroics, yet that doesn't feel like you're dominating, but you've won nine in a row, which is domination. Yeah, I I, I mean I, I, I hear what you're saying. It's uh, and and so wow, they tie the record if they handle the rest of this homestand, huh? Yeah. Because they got two more games in the next 24 hours. And then here comes the first place Diamondbacks. Although, well, no, they will still be the first place Diamondbacks by then. But the, the lead is down to two and a half. Lead's down to two and a half. Yeah, geez. Um, Last time they won 10 in a row was 1962. Has it been that long? According to That's what uh, they're going for tonight? Actually, 2004, they won 10 in a row. Okay. 82, they won 10 in a row. Even still, 20 62, years. 62, they won 10 in a row. And uh, the last time they won 11 in a row was 1998. So you've got a 20-year streak basically on the line tonight. And by tomorrow, uh, add in maybe 25-year streak. Right. So, yeah, I get what you're saying. They're playing great baseball. They're playing great baseball. But it's not like every game is 8-2. to two. Uh, That's all I'm saying. Roy and San Leandro with Willard and Dibbs. Hey, Roy, what are you doing? Hey, how's it going, fellas? What's it's cooking? Nice to hear from you. Yeah, it's good to hear from you. I think you called us, but anyway, uh, go ahead. Right. Yeah, I just wanted to mention. Uh, uh, I just wanted to say. I just hope the Giants don't don't be stupid. You know, like Brian Sabian and give up the whole farm system just for one or two players, like he did. Because what I'm saying is that the Giants got a chance to be good again, and uh, all they only something like three players away from uh, going to the World Series again. So what I'm saying is that even if they go after a pitcher, they got players that they could trade, like maybe that guy named Villar and uh, Slater and maybe one or two others. But just the same, I'm saying that, you know, don't give up the house just like that guy they traded Adam Duvall for, for right. example. You know, now he was he was out of the majors within two years after that trade. So I'm just saying that for the Giants not to be stupid and don't give up the house for some pitcher whose earn run average is almost four. That's all I wanted to say. And it's nice hearing from both of you. Thank you very yeah, much. Thank you, Roy, for calling us. I appreciate nice. that. Shout out to Joe. <laughs> Thanks for calling, Roy. Dibs. Yeah, no I problem. I appreciate that. I'll Thank call you, you again uh, next week, Roy, when Mark's out because yeah. it'll be good to hear from sure. you again. <laughs> I love Roy. Uh, who did they get in the Duvall trade? Who was out of the league two uh, years later? Gosh, that's a long time ago. Yeah, because I know you've got a long ago. list of Farhan trades you want to run through, and I'm well, looking forward to that. I, I, like, has there been a bad Farhan trade? Well, you have the list, and I, I'd like to I don't to have go, the list. Oh, I thought you had I I you you from memory. the list. I've, yeah. I've looked at a bunch. Um, but here, Adam Duvall trade Giants. Like, I remember, you know, Brian Reynolds is the one that I bring up. That uh, that that ended up being a uh, a mess. Okay, the Giants. Mike Leake is who they got. Mike Leake. Mike Leake. Yeah. With an E. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They also um, got rid of uh, Curry Mella in that trade. I don't know if he ever turned. Never heard him. Yeah, he sound, that sounds like an ice cream topping. But uh, but anyway, yeah, there have been some bad ones. Here's why, Roy. I don't think you have to worry. Although you took a shot at Brian Sabian, and I love Brian Sabian, but I don't think you have to worry for a couple of reasons. A uh, Farhan has, has never done anything like that. I don't think that's in his repertoire. And B, I don't think anybody in the major leagues really does that very often anymore. Now, yes, there are blockbusters, right? Dodgers get Scherzer and Turner. But the idea of, at the deadline, giving up top prospects for rentals, remember when the Dodgers got Turner, and I bet this was a part of the deal, 
the, the Nationals are shopping Scherzer, and they want the Dodgers' top prospect. Well, the Dodgers say, well, then you, we need Trey Turner also. We'll give you more prospects, but we need Turner because Turner's not just a rental. He's a guy that we can have for two years. Now, they lost him after that. They've lost them both. But Major League Baseball doesn't do that anymore. It's one of the reasons I've defended this regime against the deals they didn't make, right? Where, oh, Baumgartner, Rodon, trade those guys. I don't think you get very much for that anymore. Right. You just don't. You don't. Uh, people have for rentals. I, I, know, I yeah. think people have wised up. They're like, we're not giving away a top prospect for ten weeks of a player, especially for a pitcher. Now Juan Soto was different because yep. then the Padres went on to sign him and they were able to keep him. But if they didn't sign him and keep him, then that would have felt like a different deal, right? Although that was an arb thing, I think. I don't think Juan, oh, they Juan picked Soto, up his arm. Yeah, yeah, I don't even so think they, he's. Uh, I don't even think he's gotten to free agency yet. Yeah, you, you're probably um, right there. Yeah, he's on. Yeah, he's arb three right now. Are four next year, UFA after that. Oh, God. So he's on consistent one year deals. He's so good that he makes a lot of money on the one year deal. He's making twenty three million this year. But yeah, he remains an incredible value. What the Padres are going to do with him is uh, that's a mystery. That's going to be interesting because everybody with the Padres gets those nine figure deals, and Juan's sitting here on repeated one year deals off of arbitration, and he's one of the best players in the game. Pretty unique situation. Right, right. So every year he gets a new arbitration, so his contract is just going to continue to go up then if he yep. has good years. Yeah, yeah. Juan Soto next year, Arb 4, what? $30 million. Right. $30 million bucks, And then he'll be a pending free agent. And uh, we'll see where the Padres are. Maybe he's on the market as a rental th- right. this time next year. Because um, I don't know if the Padres can afford to keep him with I mean, all the money that they're already shelling I mean, out. They keep. I, I listened to Tony Gwynn Jr. on with Bonte and Joe earlier today, and he was saying uh, there have been already about five times where you've looked at what the Padres are about to do and go, there's no way they're going to spend that. And then they figure it out. I don't know where they've got right now. They've got a well of cash that they're, they're willing to spend and lock everybody up until their 40th birthday. So I'm not going to doubt them. Maybe they'll do it with yeah. Soto too. I don't know. Well, the Giants are in a spot now where as they head into the deadline, which is still now, you got basically six weeks. It's roughly six weeks from now. If you're in the same spot in terms of winning, then you're not really looking to make a major deal because your roster right now is pretty good. It's pretty deep in terms of everything but starting pitching. The only thing you could use right now is one more starter or two more starters, depending on if Manaya and Stripling ever materialize and Kyle Harrison ever comes up. If none of those guys ever come in and contribute, then you might need two more starters if your injuries don't work themselves out. Yeah, because you're gonna you're just gonna keep taxing that bullpen. And again, it was another great performance out of the pen last night. Tristan Beck is the name. Yeah, everybody's focused on Casey Schmidt, Patrick Bailey, Luis Matos, and I get it. Um, but don't forget Keaton Wynn, who was on this show yesterday, and don't forget Tristan Beck, who had this to say after the game. You know, I think, uh, you know, a lot of guys just kind of turned the corner after kind of an uncomfortable start to the year. You know, uh, we came out of Mexico City, and that was, you know, a lot of outside factors there. You know, some guys didn't maybe have the success they wanted, but we came out of that and just kind of pulled together as a group, you know, and said, hey, we're capable. Hey, we've got all the uh, pieces we need to have success, and, uh, you know, we, we just need to take ownership of it. And so I think a lot of guys really took it personally, and, uh, you know, we've kind of seen what we've been able to do these last few weeks. You know how the Giants got Tristan Beck? Tristan Beck was part of the Mark Melanson trade four years ago where Farhan Zaidi was brand new, and he got, and remember, this was a thing at the time, he got someone to take Melanson's money. Everyone thought Melanson could be a a, a trade candidate, but the Giants could probably have to eat like two-thirds of that deal. He got the Braves to take all of Melanson's money. There's a couple deferred payments that the Giants still make, but... Uh, he got m- the Braves to take Melanson's money and in return got two players, and one of them was Tristan Beck. I was sitting there thinking about that last night and trying to remember a bad Farhan Zaidi trade. You can talk about signings, sure. You can talk about acquisitions from the Mariners minor leagues that never did anything. But have the Giants lost anything of value, lost anything in any trade that they wish they had back? I mean, you'd have to go through the long list, and he's made so many trades, you'd have to really pick through all of them, but none of them stand out in terms of guys that he's gotten rid of who've come back to bite him 
in the in the in the backside. I was while I was doing some research on this, it's actually hilarious how many deals the Giants have made since he's come on. I it's got to be more than sixty. It's, I mean, it's it's literally hundreds. I'm going through one year, and there's just trade, 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 trade. And it's all these guys you don't really, really remember. Um, but the only one I can think of that right now on the surface looks like it didn't do good things was when they sent out Mauricio Dubon for uh, uh, Michael Papirski with the Houston what? Astros. And Dubon's killing it. He's doing great in Houston. Um, it was a great trade when they got Dubon, remember, for Drew Pomeranz yeah. and, uh, and Ray Black. But the, the guys they gave up for Chris Bryant have not necessarily popped. What's Papirski doing? Anything? Uh, I think that he is developing video games in Silicon Valley. The Tristan Beck trade is fascinating because I'm looking at his numbers right now. When they acquired him in 2019, he had pitched nine innings in rookie ball for the Braves organization. He had pitched basically 36 innings in advanced A for Florida. So you acquire him. He goes to San Jose. 2020 is a non-year for all minor yep. leaguers. 21, he makes very little progress. He gets shelled in double A for 18 innings. He has a 5.89 ERA. Last year, he plays a little bit better, doesn't play a ton in the minors. In, in general, he's got a 5 ERA in, in triple A. Right. He's not good there either. And yet now he comes up there and he, he pitches three <laughs> big innings in a win to give you nine straight. It's bizarre. It's a Farhan special. It, completely. So what did Farhan see in 2019 for a single-A rookie ball pitcher out of Atlanta? And he was a fourth-round pick by the Braves. So there was a time when Tristan Robert Beck out of Corona, California, was highly thought of. But since then, he hasn't really shown much, much dominance I, at any level. And, and yet here he is. Here he is. And people forget. Uh, the, the Lamont Wade, that was a trade. Uh, Mike Yastrzemski, that was a trade. Tyro Estrada, that was a trade. J.D. Davis and others in exchange for Darren Ruff, who got like three hits in his Mets career, that was a trade. There have been a lot of really good ones. I can't think of any on that famous list of Giants trades that really hurt, right? The Duvalls and the Brian Reynolds and, uh, you know, all, all of those types of trades. I can't think of any to this point.